and I'm Keske Nishimura from Recycle Security. And today I'd like to talk about our project, uh, say Bench. So to ensure software security, parsing has successfully contributed to uh, automatically finding bugs. And for example, OSS Pass has found more than 8,000 vulnerabilities and 28,000 uh, bugs. So when we use parsing, sometimes we got a lot of crashing inputs that, that cause a crash to a targeted software. But how do we process them? So if in, in, in the next step of parsing, how do we process? Maybe one possible solution to process a lot of crashing input is the automation of uh, crash analysis. And this is called uh, RCA, or root cause analysis, also known as port localization, and which try to reduce the, uh, the cost of analyzing crashing input by automatically finding uh, the root cause locations. The typical uh, RCA tools takes two uh, inputs. Uh, one is the target program and also crashing input. And then it shows the location, the candidates of uh, root cause locations based on their heuristics or some algorithms. So how, do, how does it work? And based on our observation, um, I'll say tools uh, consist of two major components, data augmentation and feature extraction. The former or data augmentation takes the crushing input and then it generates more and more program inputs, diverse program uh, inputs, uh, crushing inputs and non-crushing inputs. And then the latter uh, feature extraction takes the result of data augmentation and then um, it uh, tried to find the root cause locations by, by statistical uh, analysis method uh, the targets, so the designer uh, based on their designs. So our goal is to evaluate such uh, LCA tools, but uh, we found that it's challenging due to the following uh, three, three, three reasons. The first reason is the first challenge uh, is about uh, no uniqueness of root cause locations. And let me show you an example, the actual vulnerabilities CB2017 and, uh, uh, sorry, uh, I, uh, well, 15232 and in the original source code, the variable output, output buff can be null. So it may cause crash. And let's assume that you are a user of LCA tools. Uh, two, you are a user of two LCA tools. And where do you think the LCA tools indicate as the uh, root cause locations? And your, uh, your first LCA tools may find the here. The root cause may say it's the root cause location is here just before the loop. And, and based on this suggestion, uh, patch can be like this. And yeah, as, as you can see, this patch works well. But how about this location uh, just after the loop and just before the referencing it? And based on the suggestion, this, the patch would be like this. And when fixing this issue by adding checks of output buff, uh, this patch should be acceptable. And perhaps the previous patch would be better because of the code quality or performance or other kind of reasons. It, be, it, be, it depends on the context and situations. But, and as I mean, as I wanted to, uh, so what I want to say here is that uh, to fix this issue, uh, both uh, both locations are correct, 
and both patch would be accepted to fix just to just fix these issues. So to to sum up, if we define the root cause location as the source code location that should be fixed, then there can be multiple uh, sets of can set sets of ground truths of root cause location. So in the evaluation of our set truths, uh, different uh, evaluator can use the different uh, ground truths. So that can uh, threaten the validity of evaluations. And this is the first challenge, MOBAS. And the, de the second challenge is about the uh, the modularization of uh, RCA tools. As I mentioned before, uh, existing tools uh, consist of two uh, steps, data augmentation and feature extraction, and they're uh, separatable and they're orthogonal, we believe. And data augment, as for example, um, Aurora, uh, which is presented in Unix 2020, uh, uses the AFL crash exploration mode as data augmentation, and Balrog, uh, presented in Azure CCS, uh, uses Compass as data augmentation. And they uh, implement their own algorithms as a feature extraction, and we call them uh, Aura FE and Balrog FE, respectively. However, uh, we believe that uh, they are not fully modularized. So, I mean, for example, uh, Balrog FE cannot use the result, result of uh, AFLCEM directory uh, due to the lack of the modularization. But however, we believe that uh, data augmentation and uh, feature extraction should be modularized and so, so that each method can be used interchangeably. The third challenge is about the values, uh, variable characteristics of data augmentations. Um, the current data augmentation uh, de highly depends on the parsing. Yes, they, they sometimes use the test case written by humans, uh, human developers, but uh, the OR, uh, I'm sorry, uh, AFL crash exploration mode or CONCFAS uses the, the fuzzing technologies and which is a stat, uh, random process. So to, pre to precisely evaluate uh, our say tools, we have to consider at least three factors, the following three factors. The first factor is uh, time uh, spent in data augmentation. The larger uh, data augmentation time, and if it means the larger uh, time of parsing may increase the diversity of uh, inputs, program inputs, and however, the how uh, diverse and larger dataset affect the result of feature extraction um, is still unclear. And also, the second uh, factor, the initial seeds, initial crossing input is also important because in the f uh, in the field of fuzzing, it is known that uh, initial uh, initial seeds can affect the performance of fuzzing uh, significantly. So yes, yeah, sometimes. So um, the evaluator have to care about the initial seed. Um, but I believe uh, we believe that the existing ev evaluation um, is not free care. Uh, is not uh, cared about this fact. And also the third uh, factor is the randomness of fuzzing itself. As I mentioned. Uh, fuzzing is a stochastic process, so the generated dataset can change with each fuzzing run. But however, the existing in the existing variation, sometimes they use uh, only one dataset from single fuzzing run. So we have to say that uh, we have to do um, more. Uh, we have to do evaluate with more diverse uh, data set. So to tackle this, this aforementioned three challenges, we 
uh, we proposed uh, Alcea Bench. Alcea Bench contains uh, the three uh, actual vulnerabilities and bugs as the targets. Uh, we carefully selected them to include diverse root calls and crash calls, such as uh, you uh, use for free and thief overflow. And in addition to this selection, we defined and the root cause location in advance uh, with, uh, based on the actual patch and fixes. And actually, this is a temporary countermeasure to the challenge one, which is uh, no, the problem about no uniqueness of root cause locations. So I mean, the, perhaps the best way to solve this problem is to propose a, a reasonable way to express the root cause locations or reasonable definitions of root cause locations. However, it is very dif uh, difficult and b because of the diversity of root causes. So we uh, we adopted so, so we adopted this temporary but effective uh, countermeasure for just making them uh, the def just uh, defines uh, def defining the root cause location and then making them public. Uh, so. This is uh, this is a temporary countermeasure for the challenge one, and also the uh, second feature of RCA Bench is the modularization. Uh, the current version of RCA Bench support two uh, data augmentation: uh, data uh, AFL CM and Confluence, and two feature extraction method uh, of Aura FE and Confluence. Uh, sorry, Balnock FE. And also we implemented the, sorry, we implemented the abstraction layer, um, which allows, uh, for example, uh, Balnock FE can use the result of or FLCM, uh, which can enable uh, to test the new combinations of uh, data augmentation feature extraction. The third feature of RCA is the uh, support for variance-aware uh, measurement. The, for some targets, we prepared uh, some uh, multiple uh, initial crossing input to see the difference in initial uh, crossing input. And also, uh, we uh, the, this platform uh, is designed to allow the evaluation with multiple data augmentation time. And also uh, the configuration-based platform allows us to easily uh, take uh, multiple benchmarking for to uh, consider the randomness of uh, variant data augmentation. Uh, thanks to these features, RCA, uh, we uh, could set and answer those questions. First, we conducted end-to-end uh, -end, uh, benchmarking as the demonstration of RCA Bench. Uh, we conducted four, uh, we experimented four uh, RCA tools. The feature existing two uh, uh, techniques, uh, Aurora and uh, Bandlock, and also new uh, newly tested combinations. And AFLCM and Balllock and uh, Confluence times ORFE. And we found that there was no obviously um, universal techniques that, uh, uh, that, that was most accurate for all targets. Uh, in the, uh, next, we investigated the relationships between the data augmentation and uh, sorry, data augmentation times and the uh, result of feature extraction, the accuracy. And for many targets, the larger data augmentation time uh, improved or did not change the accuracies of uh, feature, feature extraction. But however, there were some uh, excep exceptional uh, cases where the larger uh, larger data, augment data augment aug augmentation time worsen the accuracy. So thus we concluded that 
the data augmentation time can affect the, the accuracy in a various way depending on their targets and techniques. And also, um, so the more precise analysis and the mitigation of degradation are left for future work. The third question is about the initial seeds. And as you can see in the left uh, graph, the left figure, figure um, in, for some uh, specific uh, targets and for some specific uh, techniques, the initial uh, crushing input could affect, a uh, could affect the, the accuracy significantly. So we have to say that evaluators are in the, in the evaluations the authors, the evaluators should uh, make uh, initial seed publicly available for the reproducible uh, experiment. The last uh, research question is about the randomness. And we conducted the same experiment five times and we found, um, we found that in some case, uh, randomness can affect the, the accuracy. While the left result was constant, uh, right result uh, differs significantly due to the randomness. So multiple uh, measurement is needed for uh, process evaluations. And finally, we have to talk about the limitations and future work of our project. And first of all, um, as we show in the previous page, the randomness of uh, data augmentation threatens the threatens our validity of our evaluations. Yeah, uh, we demonstrated that end-to-end uh, -end benchmarking uh, in the research question one, but uh, more uh, robust statistical analysis is needed for uh, you know, as the future work. And also we have to admit that the seven target is not enough to uh, evaluate the full the, the existing and future uh, techniques of us RCA. And we have we plan to add more targets from fuzzing existing fuzzing benchmark and ex existing the how okay, so real-world vulnerabilities. So let me summarize this uh, this talk. And to tackle affirmation three challenges, we we propose the RCA Bench, uh, open benchmarking platform for RCA, and to tackle to solve to temporarily uh, temporarily solve the no uniqueness of uh, root cause locations program. Uh, we defined the ground truths and made them publicly available. And also, LCA Bench supports the modularization of data augmentation and feature extraction. And finally, and it, LCA Bench supports uh, variance aware uh, benchmarking of data, of data augmentation. Uh, my presentation is finished here, and thank you for listening, and I'll take any questions. So, thank you for your talk. I think it's a very important topic, but um, also I think for the future research, it would be great to see how you guys working on some sort of prioritization of uh, this box, right? So when you are trying automatically triaging, it will be interesting to see like, exploitability, right? What kind of risk and uh, uh, basically it's different severity of vulnerabilities and how the prioritization of spatching can work. Because indeed we finding in a lot of bugs during the buzzing, but most of the process of analyzing these crashes is let's say in the best case semi-automated. It still requires some manual analysis. And uh, for the open 
future development of this tool because um, exploitability it means does this bug is really exploitable or it is basically maybe some vulnerable primitive or maybe it's functional issue and doesn't cause any security side effects. So basically as a context it's very important for prioritization, for patching up and fixing such issues. Uh, specifically in the open source world where we have so many crashes right now. No, it's no right answer, it's 